the NBA draft last night in Brooklyn. The top went basically exactly as we expected. Certainly the very top went as we knew it would. Victor Wembanyama, the third number one pick ever taken by the Spurs. The others turned out well. David Robinson and Tim Duncan. The Hornets then, as Woj told us they would, selected Alabama's Brandon Miller with the second pick, who was the SEC player of the year last year as a freshman. And then, no surprise, Scoot Henderson from the G League Ignite goes at number three to Portland, which means they didn't trade for a veteran, which means we now start asking questions about Damian Lillard's future. Here's Portland's GM Joe Cronin with some of the answers. Dame badly, badly wants to win. And he's probably being more vocal about that than ever, but I don't look at that as a negative. He's bought in, he wants it to work here, and he's challenging us to get it done, which I think is more than fair, and he's earned that. Okay, so look, this is something that we've been sort of working up to here for a while. The, mm -hmm. Damian Lillard, could he find a way to win in, in, in Portland? They get this young player that everyone is super excited about. So what does this mean for Damian Lillard? That's up to him. I mean, Damian Lillard has to decide... Uh, if he wants to grow with this young group, this team's not going to be a championship contender this season. I think they've done an outstanding job in Portland uh, the last couple of years in the draft. Shaden Sharp last year, who they drafted in the lottery, and then this year, three, you know, Scoot Henderson certainly at the top, and then two other very good players who you can see a pathway to this young team. And if Damon Lillard wants to go to a contender, it's going to probably have to be somewhere unless he's willing to wait a couple years for this group to grow. There's no magic trade out there for them. You know, they'll try to re-sign Jeremy Grant. I have some confidence to be able to do that. Uh, you know, he was certainly impactful last year for this organization. Damon Lillard has said he's wanted to play his career in Portland. He's wanted to retire a Blazer. He certainly has that opportunity. He, he's going to be among the highest paid players in the league over the next few years. Uh, but... I think Portland did what was right by their organization, their front office, trading out of number three for whatever the best available veteran would have been, it would have been malpractice. It just would have been you, you in a market like Portland, you don't get cracks at it. You can't go out in free agency and get star players. Your chance to get a star player, just like they did with Damian Lillard, is typically through the draft. Mm -hmm. I think they did that last night. It makes sense. And so if you're doing team building here, Bobby, which is your area of expertise, maybe the best way to continue to further this youth movement is to trade Damian Lillard and get other, you know, asset pieces. How do you look at this thing here? And what is your expectation regarding Lillard in the next week or so? Yeah, I think there's going to have to be a hard conversation. As Woj said, this is who we are, right? We, I thought they did extremely well in the draft. Ryan Rupar, Chris Murray, certainly Scoot Henderson. If you bring back Jeremy Grant, Matisse Thibel, who's also a free agent, who are we? Are we a playing team? Or likely not a championship Denver-like. And it's going to take a couple years. And if Damian Lillard wants to be traded, it's up to Damian Lillard to walk into Joe Cronin's office and ask to be traded. Joe Cronin is not going to pick up the phone today and start calling teams here. And that's the reality of where the Trailblazers are right now with their roster. You know what it reminds me of? And Big Perk, you won a championship in Boston mm -hmm. playing with, among others, the great Kevin Garnett. And Garnett, he loved Minnesota. He, yep. you know, he, he stayed there as long as he possibly could. And then he realized, you know what? The time has come for me to go try and win here later in my career. It, that feels like a similar – I don't think anyone would be grudge. I feel like Damian Lillard, this is just my psychological evaluation of a person I've never met in my entire life mm -hmm. and I'm sitting 3,000 miles away. But it feels to me like he doesn't want to – his legacy to be that he asked his way out of Portland. And I just don't think it will feel that way. And you know what? I'm glad you brought that up because at KG Hall of Fame, when he was in, uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, in his speech he said – the only regret that I have is that I didn't get to Boston sooner, mm. right? And this is the same thing for Dame. And Bobby and Woj just talked about it. He's going to have to, like, walk into the office. Or a guy like Chauncey Billups is going to have to go to him and say, hey, bro, it's time for you to leave. Other than that, I expect the season to start with Damian Lillard on the roster mm. playing in the Trailblazers uniform. He, like, he's just cut from a different cloth. I don't know why we want to see him on a contender because we actually want to see him playing when it matters the most. But Dane don't like Dane got to want that, and he got to come to to re, like realization that no one is coming to Portland. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to get a Giannis, you're not going to get an MB. That's what's going to take you over the top. 
Uh, so we signed a Jeremy Grant. What does that actually do? And now you have to ask yourself and be honest with yourself, dang, okay, if we get you uh, any type of second option, are you the number one guy that could take us over the hump in the Western Conference? And the answer is no. In, in this league now, and you've seen it the last several years, there's a certain level of star or very good player that a general manager can trade for. There's a certain level of superstar that another superstar has to go get for you. A star player in this league, like Kevin Durant and James Harden mm -hmm. in Brooklyn, where James Harden and Kevin Durant get together and they say, we want to play together in Brooklyn, and the star player in Houston goes to the front office there and says, trade me to the Nets or trade me to the Sixers. These are the two teams. If you trade me anywhere else, I'm not going to be happy about it. Um, you can pressure your way there. That is done at the star player level. LeBron James wanted Anthony Davis in L.A. from New Orleans. Anthony Davis tells them, I want to go to L.A., and if you trade me to Boston, I'm just going to leave as a free agent the following year. So there's a certain level of star player in this league that has to get another star player to demand his way out and demand it to Portland. That's not been able to happen with Damian Lillard in his career there, and it's not been able to happen with other star players but there's only so much because teams don't part with those kind of players. Right, they don't just right. send them to your team for a couple, you know, young players and a draft pick. They have to be typically forced to. But but the crazy part about it is that other superstars have actually reached out to Dame about like, hey, come over here and let's team up together. Right. And the answer has been no. Let me get legs in here because we've talked about, um, you know, Miami and, and uh, he he himself actually, Damian Lillard, told Brian Custer that would be a preferred destination. Well, we were cooking up a trade to Philadelphia here earlier this week. Bobby keeps telling me it's not good enough. But I don't know. I kind of <laughs> liked it. One way, one way or another, how do you see all this legs? Yeah, look, any, any team he ends up on, right, is going to give you a shot. I mean, he could play on my men's league team. We got a shot at maybe doing something <laughs> in the postseason. Um, so, because he, he's that talented, he's that special, the thing that we all want to see is Damian Lillard play in May and June, and, and that would mean going to a team that's very close. And that, I think, means more teams in the Eastern Conference. When I mean, you look at Philly, you look at Miami, even a team like Brooklyn, which might not be quite on the precipice, Damian Lillard going to a team like that that's got some really nice pieces, a team that can really defend, he could be a major difference maker there as well. And I think the situation is so fluid in the East. He goes to any of those teams, immediately Damian Lillard probably makes them a favorite, potentially. Um, so I think Miami probably does make the most sense because the infrastructure's in place with what they already have defensively and they have another star player. But who knows? Time will tell. Time will tell on that one. In the meantime, there was one future Hall of Fame guard who was traded yesterday. For the second time in a week, or even less than that, Chris Paul traded yesterday to Golden State in exchange for Jordan Poole, the future Hall of Famer CP3. He's 38 years old. Poole is 24. He's owed $125 million over the next four seasons of his contract. The Warriors' title odds did not move, not a muscle, not an inch, not an ounce, That's after th this, new, this, this deal was announced. Golden State, the seventh favorite right now, fourth shortest odds in the Western Conference behind Denver, Phoenix, and the Lakers. Th this one, I will admit, floored me. <laughs> I got off the golf course yesterday. I looked out. Woj bomb. Oh, my God. <laughs> what happened here? This is really, uh, I don't know if it's the first one, but I think it's the first prominent uh, impact of the new salary cap, the new collective bargaining agreement that was really set up to be uh, punitive toward teams like Golden State, whose spending has just gone so far over the rest of the leagues. You can't pay all these guys anymore. And if, and if Golden State wanted to be able to give Draymond Green, for example, uh, the kind of, let's say, a three-year or four-year deal uh, to be able to stay there. They needed to get some longer-term money off. That was Jordan Poole, around $30 million a year, guaranteed. He's 24 years old. Typically, you don't see 24-year-old players who average, who played all 82 games, who averaged, I think, almost 25 points as a starter, traded for a guy who's going to be 39 in the playoffs. But Chris Paul's going to be in the last year of his contract, of the guaranteed years. And they had to start making hard decisions in Golden State. Mike Dunleavy, Jr., Joe Lake of their owner, and so uh, they traded a 24-year-old because of what this new salary cap looks like. They will not be the last team that mm. has to make some hard financial decisions. Right, let me get legs in on this one here because uh, 
we all understand that there were also extenuating circumstances with Poole, right? He had the incident with Draymond Green. He could, basically couldn't even play him by the end of the playoffs mm -hmm. last year, so it was what it was. But he's a good young player, and we'll see. As far as Chris Paul on the Warriors, I mean, just, just envision this for me here, Tim Legler, assuming he does play the season there. Um, you got him now with Steph, and we assume Draymond, and we assume Clay Thompson. You know, we know, we, Lord knows we know what the group is there. How does that fit to you? I don't get it at all, to be honest with you. Look, I understand moving on from Jordan Poole. That's not surprising to anybody. But I think what they acquired and what they need are two different things. And I think for Chris Paul at this stage of his career, stylistically, I just don't understand how he's going to fit in with the way that they play. This isn't even a team that typically has the ball in a point guard's hands to generate offense in terms of facilitation. Those guys look for scoring opportunities. So I don't understand. Chris Paul doesn't move without the basketball very well. He doesn't really play a fast pace. That's what Golden State wants to do. That's when they're at their best. Uh, I don't really know why you would go out and acquire a player like this. I know he's a veteran player. He's a guy I think you would trust certainly a lot more in the postseason, assuming he's healthy, which he's had a hard time doing. But this is a team that last year, to me, looked slow, and they looked small. And I don't think they addressed either one of those things with this particular trade. Didn't you say to me the stat uh, that Matt Williams gave you about fast and slow? Yeah, sixth. Uh, with uh, Last year, Golden State, sixth fastest in the league as far as pace with Chris Paul on the court, sixth slowest in the, in the league here. So there's certainly a, a contrast in style when you add him to that roster. So help me with this big perk. What does uh, CP3 do for Golden State? Uh, well, this wasn't about CP3 Greeny. This wasn't about Jordan Poole. This was about Draymond Green. Mm. And outside of Steph, Steph Curry, Draymond Green is the second most important person on it to that organization. Mm. And they showed that uh, by trading away Jordan Poole. When you think about what Steve Kerr uh, said about Draymond uh, in his, uh, the post-game interview or yeah. the exit interview about we're not a championship team without him. And I agree with Legs on this one. When you think about their style of play, Draymond Green is actually the point guard. Mm. So Chris Paul is going to have to redefine himself as a player, his role. He's going to have to be more of a spot-up type shooter. I don't see it fitting, and that's why I'm not high on them. So everybody was like, oh, what you think about CB3? I'm like, nothing. In the end, it's about getting money off, because it wasn't just that they traded Jordan Poole, a uh, 24-year player. They had to attach draft picks to it to get the money off. A first-round pick in 2030. 2030 and a, and a second. And, and, a last, second and last year's first-round first, uh, first round pick and Patrick Baldwin in the second-round yeah. pick they drafted in Ryan Rollins. So, so, so they, four draft picks in Yeah, it. to attach it to get the money off. This was something of a salary dump. And I, f I feel bad for Chris Paul on some level. This whole-time historically great player who now in the, in, the, in the course of one week has been traded because someone else wanted Bradley Beal and now has been traded just to get money off somebody's books, right? I mean, yeah, that's kind of where he, was, he is I now. think being a goal say, I, I think... My sense is he was excited about this. Oh. Washington, I mean, listen, I think going back to L.A. would have been a first priority for either of those two teams. Right. But it gets him on the West Coast. It gets him with uh, a championship organization, certainly. Um, when you're not a free agent, it's hard to pick your destination. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.